Hello, welcome to the second uh, webinar uh, where we are going to be, uh, I'm going to be showing you how you can use the pop artists that I showed you in the previous one to inspire your own artwork. So this, uh, first of all, I'm going to talk you through Andy Warhol and Roy Lichtenstein, who were the two artists we were going to uh, base our work on uh, were we to have been in school. <clears throat> So oh, Andy Warhol. So as I said in the previous uh, the previous webinar, I, I briefly spoke about how Andy Warhol used to. Uh, he's very famous for doing his prints of soup cans and food products. But the other thing that he did was he did lots of portraits of famous people uh, from the time when he was working. So that is the 1960s, uh, well, late 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, even early 80s as well. And so. A lot of these people were very popular icons and good example of this is Marilyn Monroe, which is a really iconic picture that he did here. And these are made through a method called screen printing, which is where you use stencils to actually build up colours and you can actually use actual photographs as well uh, to then add the final layer and the final detail. So it's a technique where photos are used to create the stencils on a screen and ink is spread across uh, to print shapes. Colours are built up to make an image. I'm going to show you a short video now uh, uh, with a screen print, uh, showing, talking you through a screen printing technique and it's quite good. So it's not something we can actually do in school, but we can do a version of it that we do with the year 10 students, but it's good to actually see how Andy Warhol would have built his images up when he made them.
Okay, so as I said, um, <clears throat> we we wouldn't be able to do that in school because we don't have uh, the equipment for that. Uh, and it's quite things like the light sensitive uh, box, specialist printers or art colleges would, would have those. Uh, but we can do a version of that where we, we do build up an image using the different colors and then adding that photographic layer at the top, uh, which he talked about at the end of that, which just ties the image together. And I'll just show you how we would have done it in class. So um, working with a picture like this of the queen, we can just use uh, tracing paper just to trace the picture of the queen onto lots of surfaces. So either tracing paper or graphite onto the back, like we did with the portraits earlier on in the project, you can uh, then draw on top of the image and transfer it through. And you should end up with, first of all, an outline of the queen like that. So we would have used colored paper to try and make our, our Andy Warhol versions, uh, on our versions of the Andy Warhol pictures. So once that would be cut out, that would be our first layer. So that is a bit like uh, the first layer that the lady had when she did her stencil print. Um, it's just one color and it's quite an abstract. We would then choose different parts to trace uh, that we would want to have on that. So uh, for example, here I decided that the crown I would make yellow and the jewelry as well I would make yellow. Then choose a different color for the hair. So again, at the moment, it is still looking quite sort of childish and, and quite simple. And then the very final layer that we would add would be then that photographic layer where you add the detail to the picture and you work on top of that. So that would have been how we would have uh, made our stencil portraits uh, of uh, the Queen in the Andy Warhol style. Okay, uh, so Roy Lichtenstein would be the next artist that we're going to look at. And just a quick introduction to Roy Lichtenstein. So he was one of the leading pop artists of the 1960s and he painted comic books after his son challenged him to paint as well as his favorite comic artist. And his paintings often used dots and flat colors to replicate the printed comic books. And often he would include words to capture the actions uh, action scenes of the comics on there. Here is an example of some of his his work. So as you can see, so imagine seeing these in an art gallery where you've got uh, giant sections of uh, comic strips appearing in front of you. This picture we often see when we go to London uh, to the Tate Modern Gallery. Uh, a, it's a huge picture. It's really great to look at because it's so bright and, and vibrant. And often they're quite dramatic scenes that he does capture in his work. Okay, so I'm going to show you a short video on Roy Lichtenstein, which is really good because you actually get to um, see some of his work in a gallery and you get to see uh, the type of work that he produced. That was not the video. Okay.
Okay, so <clears throat> we we would have gone on to to do a portrait in the style of Ray Lichtenstein as well, and I'll just talk you through how we we would do that, and it's a similar way to using uh, the, the, what we did with the Andy Warhol picture, uh, because pop art is a lot about repetition. So for this project, we would have done a lot of tracing or transferring of images. So this is a picture of Roy Lichtenstein. And to try and turn him into a Roy Lichtenstein style picture, the first thing we would have done is trace work and gone over the outlines and really thought about simplifying the face as best we could. To be honest, I think I could have simplified that even more because when his son was talking about how he drew noses in uh, the video we just watched, you actually don't need much on there to make it look like a nose. Um, we then trace it onto a surface. So tracing, we always do where you draw onto the back and then you trace, uh, press on when it's the correct way around and the picture transfers through. And then going over it with the pen. So you have got essentially a comic book style image of whoever we are drawing. Then we would have used colors just to then make uh, certain areas nice and bold. Now the thing is with Roy Lichtenstein as well, you will notice and in that video when they zoomed in on picture apart, some bits have very flat colours, some bits are actually made up with the dots. So we would have really thought carefully about what we would uh, use the dots for and what we would use flat colours. So I chose here to do the jacket and, then, and the jumper in the bold colours. And then for the dots, so for the face, uh, you could use something like this, which is mesh, where then go over it with a, a pen uh, or pencil, pencil colours if you hold it carefully in place and then that gives the effect of the dots or the skin. So using these two portrait styles, the aim of the project would have been to then you could select your favourite one and then you could go on to make your own pop art uh, portrait based on those. But again, these are both these are things that you could experiment with at home and you could try out. Uh, and if you don't have tracing paper, you could try using baking paper, like I've said previously. Okay, thank you.